everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. I'll start with a thankful challenge that I was tagged by Mark the Arkansas Woodcutter, and it was started by Kimber Keto Life and Every Day with Kimber and Simple Life Reclaimed. They're the ones that started this thankful challenge, and I'm thankful for the talented people that I have in my house. <laughs> now, I will show you a little bit of what I'm talking about in this little video right here. The things we do for our kids. There's a Buddha on the other side of this and it's going to be glued to that board that's over there. But he's going to have to spray the contact stuff on it. Spray them, that's good. It's old spray, but it's working. Now he reads the label. Oh, sure. No, I... the Buddha. I don't know if you can see the Buddha. It's a Buddha. Yeah, he's within the... He's in it. In it's the good. board. It's, this, is the only, this is the only spot she wants cut. Yeah. This little part. That's his That's arm. That's kind of what I figured. Mm -hmm. The rest of it she can paint. Yeah. Between the creativeness with the computers and the com and the creativeness of the painters that are going to paint and the designing of this Buddha thing that's going to be hanging on the wall. It's really going to be very nice. Emily is very talented and so is Jim and so is Jessica and so is Laura. They are all talented and even so Michael. So are you. And so is Michael. <laughs> Thank and you. you are too. And I am too in a, in a sense. Um, I promised you all a story today about how I got the kids to go to church and how and going to school. Now this story isn't as exciting as the bathroom story, but it is a, it's still interesting, and it may work for you, and then again, it might not. But it's what I did, because going to church as a family was very important to me. And when the foster children are brought to you, they say, treat them like your own children and do everything that you do, and your routine is supposed to stay the same. Well, our routine was to go to church every Sunday as a family. Well, it doesn't always work out that way when you have children that really don't want to go. So, and luckily, we were we are Catholic. We still are Catholic. I was going to say we were Catholic, but we're still Catholic. <laughs> they had a mass. They had two masses on Sunday. They had an eight thirty, and then they had a, I think at eleven o'clock. I think it was at the time. We would always go for the early mass because I like to have a long day. I like I don't like my to sit around and wait to go to church, so we would always go to the early mass and everybody would go. But every now and then, somebody would refuse to go, and so if they refused to go, that meant I had to stay home from that mass. The rest of the family would go, and I would stay home, and then I would go to the next mass. But because they didn't go to church and you never knew when this was going to happen and it could have been it was planned ahead of time or it's because they didn't go to church that we would just say okay everybody that went to church this morning gets to go for the special treat and so they would all go out for either pizza or ice cream or something but the one that didn't go to church gets ready to go and I says you can't go we have to stay home. We stayed home before, so we got to stay home now. So that person and I would stay home, and the rest of them would go and have a good time and have whatever it is that they had. So the next time when it was time to go to church, they went to church. Now I also went to, if these kids liked to go to, say, the Seventh-day Adventist or the Baptist or the Tri-Church or the Methodist Church or the Jehovah Witness Church, Kingdom Hall, I went with them. So they all got to practice their own religion. The only thing I requested of them was to just enter the building. You can sit in the back, you can have your headphones on, you can read your book. I don't care what you do, just so long as we got to go as a family. And so it got to the point where they always went to church because they never knew if it was going to be one of those special days that we went out for something special and they didn't want to be left home alone. So that's how. I got them to get up in the morning on Sundays and go to church with us. 
Now the school thing, I, most of the kids I got were truant from school. They were placed with me because they didn't want to go to school. Their parents couldn't get them to go to school. And it was my job to make sure that they got up in the morning and went to school. Oh, this is a chore and a half with some teenagers because they're so used to not going and you're now you're supposed to make them go? <laughs> That's a real kicker. So I would I did a lot of crazy things. I was really crazy. If they didn't want to get out of bed, I had this I would get a pot and pan and I would go dancing around and banging my pan and nobody's gonna sleep through this commotion. And I had a song that I would, it was from the, I think it was from The Little Mermaid. It, it was like the crab or somebody singing, ho, 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 what's all these little, little clams all sleeping in their bed? Ho, oh, good morning. And it would play this big old morning song. I don't remember how it went, but yeah, it remember. was really good. And they'd go, ah. You're making too much noise. And I says, well, it's supposed to be time to get up. It's, this is the noise of the morning. And my morning noise would be pretty bad, pretty loud. So they'd get out of bed and they would go to school. And I had a couple kids that were refusing to go out the door. And I says, well, your backpacks and your shoes and your coat are going to school. And I'd be running out to the bus and they'd be chasing me to yeah. run out to the bus because I was putting their stuff on the bus. So they got on the bus too. <laughs> it was like... Oh, it was it was a fiasco, and I've sent kids to school, and the they would get to the school, but they'd never make it in the building. So then it meant it was time for me to call the sheriffs to say that I have a truant child. A child I sent to school, but they didn't make it in the school. So then they would find them and they'd either bring them back to me or bring them to school. I had other kids that were. If they were kicked out of school, say you, that's one thing you don't want them to do because these kids are placed with you because they're not going to school. And now you're going to kick them out because they're misbehaving in school. Well, if they get the out of school detention, they were grounded to me. Now you've got to be a very determined person to be grounded yourself because now if they're grounded to you, that means you're kind of grounded too. So I had one girl that was... Oh, she was six weeks grounded. And so that meant everywhere I went, she went. In fact, I would be in the kitchen and she'd be in the kitchen and she got to watch me do whatever I was doing. If I wanted to watch television, she sat on the one side of the wall. She could hear it probably, but she couldn't see it. And the only time you were allowed to be by yourself was when you had to go to the bathroom or you went to bed that night. Uh, otherwise, she was with you the full time. I took in mostly teenage girls, so this is girls I'm speaking of. We did have a few boys, but I took mostly teenage girls. Six weeks, by the end of six weeks, they are ready to go back to school. It's more fun to be in school than to be tied to, to basically follow me around. If I had to go in the other room to get something, they had to follow me to go get it. If I had to peel potatoes, they had to sit there and watch me while I peeled potatoes. They did learn a lot while they were with me. And then there was other ones that maybe just got one day out of school suspension instead of a full week. Well, those, I had a desk set up right at the right in the kitchen. And when the kids were on the bus, I, they had to sit in their chair. And I would give them their books, and they would have to be doing their schoolwork. And then when the class, when, I, when they had like 45-minute classes, and I would set the timer. I said, you've got three minutes to go to the bathroom, get a drink, and do whatever you want to do. Stretch a little bit because the bell would have rung, and that's what you have. Then when school was done at 2.30, they'd get up, and i go, where are you going? Well, school's done. It's 2.30. I says, no, now you're on the bus. So when the bus pulls up in front of the house, then you can get up. And so they used to sit back down. <laughs> I'm amazed that they actually sat because... Mm -hmm. I don't know if today if they would have sat, but I would have not allowed any electronics of any sort. So they would have had to either read a book or do some schoolwork or twiddle their thumbs. I don't, they just had to be there in the kitchen with me. So that's what I did. So this is, <laughs> this story isn't as exciting as, as um, yesterday's. Yesterday's was really an exception. I've had other stories where they had the taco fight and the, other things in the house that was unreal but that was on a different 
that was a whole different subject to the taco fight mm. and the cleanup of that. So I hope you all had a great day and I hope you enjoyed this little bit and hope something that I said maybe works with you and your teenagers because just remember, they're only teens for a while. When they hit about 21, 22, their brain comes back. Now they're, they're going to be more to what you would like them to be. They won't think that you're you're crazy anymore. And I'm going to cough, so I'm going to have to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> <coughs> I got a... I swallowed wrong. Mm. <coughs> oh, now I'm going to sneeze. Oh, gosh. <laughs>